Everybody is not going to get it but for the ones that do there's no denying how good strategy is. I was so excited when news broke that Twice and Megan were even going to have a collaboration. I'm the type not to get my hopes up when the outcome is uncertain like with Rose's album because I don't want to be let down, but I simply could not contain my excitement for their song. And this brought up some points. 1. Similarly to the way I feel about all JYP groups, it has never made sense to me why people denied or degraded twice popularity and relevance when they're selling out stadiums and having some of the highest grossing tours. They're more than fine. The average musician will never accomplish what they have and continue to do. In and out of K-pop, the average popular singer isn't going to break 2 million views in a day. Unlike how I always have, other fans are just started to streaming twice music simply to enjoy it. I explained in a past video that whatever reason you have for liking a group is valid no matter the reason. You just like what you like and if you decide to support someone because of that, it is what it is. I like some K-pop groups specifically because of their personalities, some specifically because of their music, and it's rarely both for me. Twice has always been a group I liked because of their music besides the fact that Jong Yun and Mina literally make me feral. Twice has grown past the sometimes restrictive labeling of just a K-pop group, and so I think Once's have moved into a space far less competitive for acknowledgement. Twice has another good at least 5 years in them, and honestly I think they could have far more in JYP's marketing wasn't literal garbage. 2. I think a lot of people stopped listening to Twice initially, because JYP rushed or didn't know how to smoothly transition maturity in their discography that was traditionally really really girly. So when you listen to Twice music as a whole it ends up sounding like a different group with the same voices. The song likely wasn't written at this time, but if strategy would have taken the position of Moonlight Sunrise and Set Me Free, I can see how the decline in their popularity popularity wouldn't have happened during long waits for Korean comebacks, while they were releasing their Japanese albums. I like most their songs and all their title tracks, but ones like Moonlight Sunrise, I don't want to say sound too mature, but is definitely not reflect Anne of the fun vibrant youth that still is twice. K-pop fans are ageist and as idols get older they're no longer seen as attractive and they're more allowed to date so they seem less accessible to the average K-pop fan whose motivations and support run off of romanticized delusion. And these kind of fans disregard the success of K-pop acts well into their 30s like the members of Shiny, Jessie and IU. When you combine this kind of prejudice with a more mature song and mature voices, that loses people. And I think Strategy is such a good example of a song that's mature in theme but still so youthful and fun. For right now I think songs like Strategy is their sweet spot. 3. I've been very transparent about my dislike for the music of K-pop companies international groups so far. Vicha and Katsai. I think their music is generic to the West, and as a Westerner I've had my fill of that. I didn't get into K-pop just to hear regurgitated material, and while K-pop does heavily take from the West, K-pop still sounds uniquely K-pop. Whereas I can turn on any channel, walk in any store and hear music that sounds just like cat size and Vichas. Wish those girls the best, but it's not my cup of tea. And this experience has been disappointing for me so far because as an international fan I've waited my whole K-pop lifetime for companies to start making international groups. And it seems like I'm just going to have to wait longer for one that I really like. When I imagined a multi-racial and multi-ethnic group from a K-pop company, I imagined them bringing the best parts of K-pop and Western sounds together. And that's what strategy is. You have the fun literally poppy sound from Twice while having the fun Western edge of rap from Megan. Boy group, bonus if it's a girl group but I don't care. If there were to debut a group that gives what strategy gives, and the group isn't full of prepubescence, I am sold. I could finally have a girl group that I love as much as BTS. Black women in rap and the K-pop sound fusion is my bread and butter. I've got quite a bit to say about Rosie the album. First I want to say that some blinks are a ridiculous bunch of people. Before Apartment I saw a post someone made about how they didn't appreciate having to wait for as long as they have for Rosé to release at least one song and Blink started attacking them and saying Rosé had nothing to prove and didn't have to release music just because fans want her to. No, it's not okay to threaten and even degrade artists for not releasing music, but expressing frustration with an artist's lack of engagement is perfectly justified. I only like a handful of the songs on her album, a lot of them were not at all worth the wait. Everyone is going to dislike something but the Blackpink members, especially the ones who left YG actually do have something to prove as independent artists and soloists. People don't deserve mass followings willing to spend large sums of money just to see them perform and who help mass stream music for their benefit just because. The music industry is competitive and none of the Pinks are well-established solo artists they most certainly have something to prove. A fan and a musician's relationship is transactional. If there's no transaction someone isn't upholding their end. Saying fans aren't owed exactly what they're fans for is insane. And I saw some blinks trying to form a witch hunt out for Rosé's nameless and faceless ex-boyfriend. 
Y'all really out here trying to fight ghosts. If she wanted people to know who the album is about we'd know. Rosé said she was in a toxic relationship she never said she wasn't the cause of that. Even though I don't think it's that deep she legitimately depicts herself as physically abusive in the toxic till the end music video despite the lyrics depicting her boyfriend as the terrible one. Now for what I think of the actual album. I'll start with praise and end with criticism. For a lot of people such as myself, Rosé's album was the album to look out for because of her distinct love for music that she's established herself having. I really love four songs, and that's 3AM, Game Boy, Stay a Little Longer, and Drinks or Coffee. I love it when chanting is used in a non-annoying way so 3AM is personally my favorite track and the kind of song that I was really hoping Rosé would utilize her voice for. I think Hard to Love initially showed that her voice can and should be employed for more than long drawn out ballads. There's nothing wrong with being a ballad singer, but I think that's better for people with much more powerful hearty voices like Adele or Beyonce, whereas being a mostly ballad singer could be quite limiting of what Rosé could do. I think her voice is far more colorful than most of the songs on her album would have you believe. Game Boy, Drinks or Coffee, and Stay a Little Longer are all songs that operate with the color I'm talking about. Even though I hate the name Game Boy I'd really like to hear all these songs live especially Stay a Little Longer, the mature rasp to her voice really made it. And this is where my praise ends. Not the same, Too Bad for Us, and Dance All Night was fine. They're not bad tracks, but just like with Gone and On the Ground these songs didn't have an edge to them that made them worth streaming. In songs, there's a beat, melody, lyric or tune that hits home and will have you coming back to listen again and again. These three songs didn't have that, and I just simply do not like Apartment, Two Years, Number One Girl, and Call It The End. Apartment was overly repetitive for me and the bridge was disappointing, really wish Bruno would have filled up that time with some singing. Some of his career-defining songs were pop rock, he could've put more stank on that. It is a successful earworm so I am singing it all the time though. But there's not a single thing I enjoy about number one girl, two years and call it the end. Boring and uneventful songs. And I actually think call it the end makes Rosé's voice sound unnecessarily harsh and even shrill. The album could've done without these ones. My sister, who we're going to refer to on my channel as Lemon Dookie, made some valid points that I think are worth a listen. Hi, I'm Lemon Dookie. I did not get to choose my name FYI. I think the way Rosé presents herself, specifically on her Instagram versus her persona, as an artist are very different, contradictory even. The Blackpink members' personas are impersonal so that they're easily digestible. As an audience we can only go off of the visuals, what we see to determine who they are as people. And what we see of Rosé is her going to Met Galas and fashion shows, and hanging out with big names in the industry despite her claims of being like every other girl in her 20s. It seems like she wants to give off an Olivia Rodrigo kind of vibe, but she presents herself as the Serena Van Der Woodson to Jenny's Blair Waldorf, at least going by her Instagram where she's most active. Not that it wasn't, but her self-titled album felt like an attempt to have as many people relate to it as possible rather than a proper reflection of Rosé and her personal experience with heartbreak. To add on I think her lack in personalization shows a lack in musical versatility, which isn't a requirement but definitely a weakness. I don't like when albums are just a collection of random songs instead of telling a story. That's like a book with all the chapters telling different stories. Chapters in a book are made up of the same story, just different parts of it. Albums should be the same. There should be a beginning, rising action, climax, falling action and end for a clean fully fledged project. Apartment doesn't even flow with any other part of her album. What I would have done differently marketing wise is I would have released an apartment in March and instead of a rather blank music video I would have had Rose and Bruno in a literal apartment running around, having fun and playing the game. A literal lyric in the apartment is hey, so now you know the game, without them ever explaining how the game works in the song or the music video. Since this was a fun collab with Bruno the music video doesn't have to be linear with the rest of the album. However the visual story I would have told, based on what Rosé has said, would be about the hassle and conflictions of fame and everyday life. I would have released coffee and drinks in July for the music video Imagine It's Nighttime. Rosé is at some club with friends having a good time. In the middle of her fun a guy from across the room notices her and sends her a drink. She starts making eyes at the guy through a sea of bodies covered in strobe light. Before she can talk to him the paparazzi show up and spoil all her fun. She and her friends make a run for it. Then she ends up at some greasy diner where the mystery guy from the club and his friends end up as well. 
They finally get to talking and Rosé and this guy hit it off. They talk all night over coffee. By the time the sun has fully risen the paparazzi find her again, but this time before leaving she gives the guy her phone number on a napkin. If I would have had it my way, the title track would have been stay a little longer and released in November. I imagine the music video simple but emotive. Imagine Rosie, her name, in big bright lights outside the theater she's performing at. Despite the festive occasion, Rosé is struggling with the spotlight on her while also trying to keep up the relationship she started with the guy previously established in the other music video. And the audience is receptive to everything that's going on and the guy, who's also in the audience, isn't enjoying the show the very most. If I were to grade Rosie like a school project, I'll give her a C for lyricism, an F for concept, and I give the overall album a C plus, Lemon Dookie logging out. If I were to grade Rosie like a school project, I'd give her an F for lyricism, a C for concept, and I'd give the overall album a C minus. Those four songs that I like though, yeah, Emma stream the hell out of those ones. There's miserable bitches and then there's cunt bitches and there's not one without the other. I give these bitches life, period. You can't be mad at me because I'm cunt when if I wasn't cunt, you would have no reason to be miserable. It's like algebra. It's like algebra. It's basically algebra.